the first part yes. uh, is a uh, short uh, description of your book. What uh, kinds of subjects do you cover in your book? Okay, uh, should I look at yes. you? Okay. So, uh, Sabra Shahana um, is, a, is basically a history, a contemporary history of Central Asia, post Soviet Central Asia, but it's written from the viewpoint of its own blogging community. My network, NewEurasia.net, uh, is, as far as we know, the largest citizen journalism network in this region. And so we use quite a bit of our own archives. And then we enlisted our readers and our bloggers uh, to research the rest of the blogging community to give us material. Um, and the idea was, it's sort of like the untraveled book, right? So I'm a Western. And what typically happens is Westerns come, Westerners come here and they become the expert at the weird, wacky Central Asians. Uh, and this is, this is a, a very biased phenomenon. So the idea was to counteract this by having this particular Westerner using his voice instead to broadcast the voice of the, the larger digital conversation that is happening here in the region. And so we have ten chapters, five for each, five, five for the countries and five for the region. And they are composed of the actual blog posts and very often reader comments as well. Um, now they're edited, they're not always full transcripts, uh, but you know, this, is, this is really the Central Asians themselves speaking. So the, uh, the part of blocks from your site is uh, become the part of your books. Yes, yeah, quite, quite literally. I mean, the, I mean, the way the way the way a typical chapter is organized is, you know, for example, I'll show you the English here, right? You, here you have, you know, my 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 voice is speaking right here, and then boom, <clears throat> we leap right into a blogger. Yeah. Right, and so it's cited, and at the back we have we're setting up a website where you can simply launch in a code, type in a code, and you go straight to the original URL. So you can see it in its original, unedited version also. Great. So, um, Thank you. And, uh, <laughs> and how often are uh, Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan bloggers are writing for your website? Okay, so um, uh, I, I cannot disclose exactly how they go about doing it, uh, particularly where they are geographically located. You know, um, <clears throat> that's, There's an obvious security reason for that. Um, when possible, we do advise them to encrypt, to encrypt their communications, but it's only if they're in the presence of a larger encryption network. This is more possible in Uzbekistan than it is in Turkmenistan. So many more people are on the internet there, so if you put. Um, otherwise, just simple security procedures. Uh, and the most fundamental one is pseudonyms. We have people write under different names. Um, now, I study philosophy, actually, as, as a student at my university. And so very often, I give them philosophers' names. Um, and the point of that is it's so, it's so arbitrary in a way that a security service trying to figure out who this person really is, the first port of call, of course, would be the name. And they, they, cannot, they cannot figure it out. It leads back to me. So they have no idea who the personality might actually be underneath there. Um, so that, that's the most fundamental thing. Now in terms of internet access in the countries, Uzbekistan has a much more, a much more developed yeah, uh, infrastructure, course. right? Um, and Turkmenistan is only just starting to get that way. Um, uh, according to my latest information for Turkmenistan, it remains the case that they must present a passport uh, at an internet cafe. But they can still privately subscribe to some services if they're in a major metropolitan area. But um, recently, uh, the major mobile internet service provider, MTS, as we say in English, was basically kicked out of the country. Um, so at the moment, there's now a sudden, the internet is kind of bottomed out again in Turkmenistan. MTS has uh, gone, gone away from the Yes, M MTS has gone away. Um, you have uh, um, Alten Asir, which is the, the, the Turkmen telecom, which is trying to make up the difference. And the president has announced some plan about how they're going to have three semi-private companies that will, all of the Turkmen people will have shares in the company and, and so forth. Um, who knows what's really going to happen, if it's a ruse of some type or, or if he actually means it, who knows. But um, at the moment, Internet access has really kind of, um, I wouldn't say died, but has really become much more difficult for people to get onto. And right now, they seem to be going through um, some very serious... Um, well, uh, repression at the moment. There's a lot of concern about North Africa um, spreading to Turkmenistan, and so the internet, of course, itself has been a target of this. They're shutting down websites again, banning them, bringing in the webmasters and talking to them. Are you being good, and so forth? Thank you. Very